Hello everyone, this is Doug Nelson with Precision Neuromuscular Therapy, and I'd like to uh, give you a review of the anatomy for precision neuromuscular therapy for the thoracic spine. Reviewing this uh, anatomy will help you when you take this seminar, and that you can focus on the technique and, um, and not worry as much, as much about the anatomy. So, to begin, as you know, our focus is really on teaching you clinical reasoning, inspiring you to be an artist, not just a technician. Or as Christopher, one of my staff says, you know, to be a chef, not just a cook. And, but in order to do that, you really have to have mastered many of the fundamentals and the most fundamental thing is anatomy itself. So, and we always take that to a little higher level, I think, than people often expect. So again, that's part of the, the uh, reason for having this videotape. So the first thing we do in the seminar is we'll take you through a measurement of the thoracic spine in all the different planes of its movement, like lateral flexion, like rotation, like extension, flexion itself. We'll measure and quantify things as much as possible. So that we'll do in the seminar. That's the best way to walk you through that. Um, in terms of muscular uh, anatomy, make sure that you familiarize yourself with the erector spinae, and especially the longus, longissimus and the iliocostalis sections. Treatment-wise, we're gonna focus mostly on the iliocostalis section because that's typically more symptomatic, but familiarize yourself with the anatomy. I must say that this picture from Barbara Cummings is not exactly uh, true to scale in terms of um, the palpation. Um, do also familiarize yourself with the rectus abdominis because that, of course, has an impact on the extension capability of the thoracic spine. So on the, the smallest of muscles, the rotatories, so here you have the rotatory brevis and the rotatory longus. And I think you're gonna love the section where we spend time with this. So, so again, one thing to point out is this spinous process. So this is the transverse process of the next lowest vertebra. So in a sense, going straight over is one down. So take a peek at whatever resource you have to familiarize yourself again with uh, the rotatories. In terms of rotation, again, the obliques are important to understand their function and their anatomy but it gets a little confusing to people. So this is the external oblique. Um, and again, these are the typical attachments. Uh, you'll know that, and you'll see this in the seminar, that while these are typical, other people will display different attachments. So never assume that the picture is the person you're working with on the table. And we'll teach you palpation strategies to help you be really clear about that. But the external oblique is a contralateral rotator. So in this picture, this is the left side. It will rotate the person to the right, and it will limit rotation to the same side. So that which rotates to the opposite side limits rotation to the same side. This is the internal oblique and it rotates you to the same side, ipsilateral, and will limit rotation in the opposite direction. So this left internal oblique will limit your ability to turn to the right. Very important. Uh, and it's easy to get it turned around. Here's a really nice picture of that as well, thinking about this as the external oblique, the right one pulling you to the left. And, and you can see how it combines with the opposite internal oblique, which does the um, which assists in that motion at the same time. So the right external and the left internal help rotate the trunk to the left. Another muscle that is attached to the ribs that plays a role in rotation is the serratus posterior inferior. And you can see how this is a bit of a twin to the internal oblique and that it will also rotate you to the same side. Up and above, now we have the serratus posterior superior, which is attaching here. You can't see its attachments on the ribs because they're actually, actually under the scapula, but it is very important in moving those um, upper thoracic ribs 
especially in uh, breathing and its uh, and ancillary movements of the ribs during larger trunk movements as well. A little known muscle that actually is very important symptomatically is the levator costorum, or sometimes spelled with an A, costorum. And that is the muscle right here. And like the um, rotatory, you have a brevis and you have a longus. So in the seminar, you'll see there are very interesting and very important symptom presentations with that muscle. And this shows you a cadaver dissection of the, the same. Uh, it's not quite as clear, not quite as easy to see here, but these are the levator castorum muscles right here. And so it's lateral to the transverse process and to the rib below. Also familiarize yourself with the diaphragm, not only its attachments, but how it functions in the respiratory cycle. So what happens to the diaphragm when you inhale? What happens to the diaphragm when you exhale? Uh, and we'll spend some time with this and show you why that's really important in terms of the thoracic spine. And of course, you have the intercostal muscles that are in between the ribs, also important for resp respiration and also uh, in a tertiary way, uh, rotation movements. We'll spend a little bit of time with the serratus anterior. Uh, it, while we always think of that as a stabilizer and also protractor of the scapula, if the scapula is stabilized, now its action is on the rib. So that's uh, an inversion thing where the the attachments actually invert themselves. So what was the origin is now the insertion. Pectoralis minor also, because it's attached to the ribs, plays a very important role in this as well, for all the same reasons as the serratus. And that's it, actually. So if you, you know, there, I think all of us have anatomy books at home and different resources. Whatever one that resonates with you, take a look at those muscles, review them before you come to class, and I think you'll find the class richer and deeper because of that. Thank you very much, and thank you very much for attending Precision Neuromuscular Therapy for the thoracic spine. One other thing, the thoracic spine, probably more than any other part of the body, is amazing because oftentimes that's not where the symptoms are. The symptoms present themselves either in the low back or they present themselves in the cervical spine. Yes, I know sometimes that the symptoms are local, but more often than not, it's somewhere else. If I'm presenting somewhere and I want to demonstrate the capacity of this work to change range of motion, I pick the thoracic spine because the odds are that I'll find someone in a, in a group of people. I'll have more luck finding somebody who has actually a range of motion restriction in the thoracic spine. Most people are completely unaware of that. So that's one of the most fascinating aspects about this seminar and one of the reasons why I really want people to take this because it's, uh, it's under the radar. So thank you very much for your participation and enjoy the seminar.